Downtown Podcast. I am super excited to speak to two incredibly intelligent ladies tonight in tech. And first we're going to start with Jacqueline Jensen. And she's been heading up the invigoration of VegasTech.com, right? So yes. tell me about this. So we all love VegasTech.com and a bunch of us got together and wanted to revive it and give it some life. So um, we got together and we launched the new site about two weeks ago and loving it. Awesome. Yeah, totally yeah. Nice to yeah. Woo. to the website, what kind of different things can they see now? So there's lots of blog posts. So if any of you guys are looking to have your startup featured or um, want an interview or doing an Indiegogo campaign or Kickstarter, it's a great place um, to get the word out. And then um, lots of social activity. So you'll see me on Twitter, at Vegas Tech, kind of everywhere. You're so, the face yeah, I'm right behind it. So um, lots of activity there as well. Awesome. And I heard that this was kind of a monumental effort that brought together a whole bunch of people downtown, right? Yes. So John Hawkins from Nine Seeds did um, all the WordPress design. It looks beautiful. Um, Jimmy from Wedgies is huge, right? He does a little bit of everything. Um, Chad from Tabiso is going to be redoing the calendar. So pretty soon um, the calendar will be powered by Tabiso. And then the Innovation Center and Switch came on board with Work in Progress. And so representatives from both of those teams are on the committee. This is fabulous. Yeah. You know, it started with the, the expansion of our community and it became more and more established. And then on, now that we've got our community established, we've got our website established even more as well. So this is super exciting news. Yes. So for people that have already been to VegasTech.com but they want to keep up on the social media, what were those account names again? Um, it's at Vegas Tech on Twitter. And then um, Dylan, the host of the podcast, he created a LinkedIn group, um, a DTLB LinkedIn group. So there's lots of great content there as well. Um, and then there's going to be email campaigns. So you can sign up to get news on VegasTech.com. Awesome. I'm yeah. be signing up tonight when I get home. Yes. This is great. Thank yes. you so much. And thank you to the committee as well for putting us together. Cool. Thanks. Class. Thank you. Thank you. Great. And yeah. next I have Stacy, And uh, Stacy Sheridan is here to talk about the leadership event that you've got coming right. up soon, right? LeaderCast Las Vegas, mm -hmm. really excited, really excited. So um, for 15 years, it's the 15th year, uh, for 14 years there's been approximately 100,000 people that get together on May 9th and uh, they come together to focus on leadership and this has been, um, it's an event that's held at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta and it's simulcasted across to 14 different countries and with a total population of 100,000 people. So I attended this in, um, in Indiana last year and I was kind of blown away with not only the content but with the leaders in the community that are brought together and I said we got to do this in Vegas. So I think we need more of this here and uh, so I'm really excited to bring it um, to bring it here at May night. So uh, we're hosting it at UNLV at Thompson Mac at, in the Red Room and it's an all-day event. We're serving breakfast and lunch and it's $89 a ticket, it's $5.99 for a table, and uh, we're just so happy to have the leadership in this community come together and really um, focus on bettering themselves. And then we've got some really special guests too. That's awesome, this That's is exciting. really great. Thank you so much for bringing this to Vegas Thanks. for those who can't fly over to Atlanta to watch it. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about who these guests are. So the guests um, are, will be graduates from the Hero School. And if you guys are familiar with Hero School at all, uh, these folks are responsible for bringing over 2,500 people from being homeless into the community. And as they, as they migrate back into the community, they go through a program and they graduate. And once they graduate, um, I believe heartily that they should be integrated back into society and why not put them in a group full of leaders um, and all of their staff. So we're selling our tables are seven and the eighth person for every single table is going to be a hero school I graduate. Love that. That's great. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. And they get so. to network and like meet new people. Yeah, and just get in the aura of these guys, you know? That's kind of I want to be in everybody's aura. So that's why it's very <laughs> selfish for me, right? That's what I'm gonna do is just surround myself with like minded individuals who are very focused on leadership. So I'm really excited. Well, this sounds like a huge event. How can people get involved or buy tickets? Okay, so Ticket Cake, and thank you so much. We are um, <laughs> pleased to be associated with Ticket Cake, and, and our sales are there. So you can go to ticketcake.com, look for the LeaderCast event. 
Um, and then also, we've uh, our website will be live here shortly, and we really want to thank um, experts in inter internet marketing for uh, their assistance there. And then our media partners, Las Vegas Business Press, will also be covering the event. So we're quite excited to have them involved as well as being leaderships leaders in the community as well. Fantastic! Thank you so much, and thanks for thank coming. Thanks for having me. I'm kind of buy a ticket. I'm yeah, good. Of course you are. You're a leader. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. So um, please give it up for Ellie. people. He actually barely got done getting through with Techstars, very prestigious, and he brought his company, who he's the co-founder of, called MoveLine here to Las Vegas not too long ago, and you guys have had tremendous growth since then. So first off, let's just start by welcoming Mr. Fred Kirk. Thank you very much for coming out. Appreciate it. So, um, yeah, I just want to hear, you have a great entrepreneurial story. You have a of more like this than anybody else's story I've seen, a lot of ups and downs, but just tell me about where you were and when, uh, tell me about where you were when you were in college and whether you thought this is where you'd be now and where the entrepreneurial story came from. Yeah, sure. So, um, so I went to school at Virginia Tech and I studied engineering, science, and mechanics there. <clears throat> and um, I was kind of, I guess, you know, I went through like my freshman and sophomore and junior year and was kind of on, on a track, you know, Virginia Tech, the majority of engineering graduates there end up working in some kind of like private sector defense probably. That's kind of like the research track and everything else um, kind of drives towards, you know, a career um, working for the government or working at like Lockheed Martin or Boeing or something like that. So that was kind of um, the track that I was on um, and had um, like a pretty significant experience there that, um, that took me on a different trajectory. Um, so the... Um, in 2007, there was a shooting at Virginia Tech, and um, I was in uh, I was on the second floor of Norris Hall where the shooting was um, in this solid mechanics class. Um, the class was taught by uh, this guy named Liviu Labrescu. Um, he was this 77-year-old uh, Holocaust survivor that was teaching this class, and uh, the shooting started in the room next door to where we were, and uh, I remember. Um, we heard, you know, we heard what we thought was like construction or something. It was my first guess, like a nail gun or something like that. And um, it, um, it like pretty quickly became clear to everybody in our room what was going on. That this was, um, this was like a really, that this was a really serious situation. That we were living through, um, you know, something that would become probably like a pretty historical event. It took some period to realize like exactly what was going on. I think I remember hearing like somebody scream in the room next door. And it became very real, like that this is yeah. that, that was what was going on, and so uh, there were I think there were 16 of us in uh, in the classroom that day, and um, about uh, 12 of us ended up jumping out of this second story window um, to escape, and myself included. Um, I was one of the last people um, to kind of make my way across the room and um, and climbed out of the window and, and jumped from the second story. It was probably like a 25 foot fall. Um, and, and hit the ground and ran away. And uh, of the people that were left in the classroom, our instructor was killed, um, a student in our class was killed. The two other students that were in the classroom um, before I jumped were, um, were shot but survived. Um, and all told, there were, uh, there were 33 people that were killed that day. It's still the deadliest school shooting in, in history. Right. Um, and so, um, so for me, this was, obviously for anybody, this was like a, a massive life event, right? It kind of sent me into like a spiral coming out of it where like the things that I was questioning or like the path that I was on with my life um, looked like it, it looked really different. It, it kind of paled in comparison to this to this experience that I had and, and this thing that I that I'd been forced into here. Even even as far as school shootings go, very few people are going to be in a situation like that, and this one happens to be the worst one in pretty much all of history. So I mean, you're taking you're more likely to get struck by lightning or something. So I mean, how yeah, how did sure. uh, I don't know how did that motivate? Like, you guys tell me about afterwards when you start digesting just how just amazingly strange that is. Yeah, very odd. Um, and and obviously, I mean, even on Virginia Tech campus, there were like thirty thousand people on campus that day. So to have been 
you know, one of like a hundred people that were in such close proximity to it, and um, is yeah, it was an extremely unique experience to have gone through. Um, and so I remember like immediately, I, I can honestly, I can barely remember like the next couple of weeks as I was like, you know, trying to figure out a lot of things in my life and, and kind of everybody at Virginia Tech was during that time. And, um, and there was kind of, uh, I remember what the next thing that happened was um, a group put together a, a marathon, like a, a memorial marathon where a hundred people um, would run the Marine Corps Marathon and we would all raise money for um, like a memorial scholarship fund. And I, I kind of jumped at it. I had never run more than a few miles at a time before doing it. And um, saw it as like kind of just a place to put all this energy that I had and kind of place like um, like something to focus myself on in life, at, yeah. you know, for the next few months or so. And it was, it represented you, like... You, you, so at that time you were looking for sort of a short term goal just to get your mind off. Yeah, Anything for sure. I was, yeah, yeah the, the school year had kind of ended. I like had an internship coming up, but I... Like the direction that I thought I would go with my life was was not the direction it was going. Clearly. So a lot of the sur survivors and people who were supporting the community after that put this together. This like kind of community effort. Yeah, there were I guess there were a couple people that that um, like had the idea and started organizing, and then a lot of people kind of got on board with it. Okay. Um, and and so for me, it was a really healthy thing over the next few months to um, to train for this thing and to set this like massive goal for myself. This thing that you know, like running a marathon is not. I, you know, I probably run like five or six miles before that and um, had no idea if I would be successful with it. It was this like massive long-term goal. I knew it would be a ton of work to do it. And, and you, and you and hurt your ankle to too, right? Like before, and then yeah, you're had, saying, uh, just, just to set the frame, the window sure. that you went out of was on the second floor. So you said, if, and I said it was a big floor, it's probably at 25 feet. Yeah, I had a, I had like a avulsion fracture in my ankle. Um, yeah. That uh, yeah, that healed up over the, the few weeks after that, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, so that healed up and yeah. and um, and trained for the marathon and kind of at the and it was it was a, like a really defining kind of like summer for me to go through that and, and like training for this marathon and then like reassessing everything else in my life at that point, I guess. Um, and you know to kind of like tie this back to to like entrepreneurship, um, I would say before this, like on the track that I was on, I had never really considered considered myself certainly not an entrepreneur or like I was kind of aware of entrepreneurship as a thing that people did not really like a profession or something um, but I just you know I had kind of this path that my life would be on and so as I started especially like the the um, going through like committing to this massive goal with this marathon and then like slowly like chipping away at it you know training day after day and then like doing it and completing it and, and achieving this massive thing I was like kind of looking for like the next thing, like another like massive goal that I could kind of dive into that, that had some uncertainty attached to it. Um, but, but you know, having like m a lot more confidence in myself, I guess, that like I was not afraid to fail at, at something massive at that point. And so this is when I started like a lot of kind of ideas that were in the back of my mind. I brought, you know, I started like working on things like this. I had, I went from there into grad school in the state of Virginia Tech and just kind of like kept tinkering on, on different ideas that I had and eventually like got to know um, some angel investors in the community and um, and so when I when I eventually finished grad school I had like a set of offers from you know like prominent um, uh, like engineering firms that I could go get a job at um, and turn them all down and, and just like you know I had like very and, little and like sort of your gut instinct. I mean the risk of not doing it is greater than the risk of doing it, right? Okay. I mean like the risk of not doing it is that you that you never know if, if you'll be successful right. at it or not. That you like will you know, you'll do you'll do something else that's that's not like fulfilling your full potential, right? That you'll you will you're risking not like reaching the potential that you have in life, I believe. And yeah. um, and that like I guess like having gone through this experience like and knowing like how fleeting like like this experience is to um, that wasn't acceptable that was like I was not gonna like waste a year of my life doing anything that I didn't want to do that was not like the hardest or the most challenging or the most fulfilling thing that I could spend my time on. Yeah. But so, so yeah, I'm mean, finding that silver lining seems like the most important thing from this story. I mean, well, I know it's kind of a tough thing to talk about. I know this is something that nobody should or will probably go through. So if you can grab in there and just pull out what it, what kind of habits maybe this built? Um, I mean, for me, it was obviously, you know, I, I like nobody should have to go through something like what we went through at Virginia Tech in this experience, but, um, but realizing that like this, like the, 
you know, the, the downside or like the things that are going on in your life, like the things that you might be worried about are like far, far from the worst that like other people have experienced or that, that could happen. And it, it brings a lot of perspective, right? So like the perspective of like, if you quit your job and take some risk, if you, um, and, and try and like go out on your own to do something, then it's, it's really not like the downside of it is, is really probably not as bad as, as, as you might be imagining, right? Like if you have a, like whatever the downside is, like you you fail at it is what happens, right? You like spend a few months of your life, or you spend or a few yeah. thousand dollars, or like you lose some investors' money or something like that. Like all of those things, like none of them are really that that bad in comparison to to kind of like what the worst the worst day of your life or of other of someone else's life could look like, right? And and the upside of doing it is that like you bring some great good to the world, or you you'll be much happier, you'll be much more fulfilled personally, and. Um, and, and especially like in, as an entrepreneur, like the, I mean, you know, we think about like what we're doing here and like the, you know, the jobs that we bring to downtown or the innovation that we bring to an industry or something like the upside potential of it is, is huge relative to like right. any, like any of the, any of the downside make, yeah. things that could happen from it. That's really interesting. Did you, did you ever talk, uh, we just have this before, but did you ever talk with your professor about surviving the Holocaust and how that affected him? Did any of like the thought, like the, the, I'm wondering if like any of the traits or characteristics he had as an instructor, like... Do you have those now? Like, did you feel? Um, I never spoke to him about the Holocaust. Um, he was, I mean, he was like one of the most passionate people that I've ever met. Um, he was incredibly good at, at um, he was like at the top of his field in aerospace engineering um, and was so passionate about like the, the subject matter that he was teaching us. So that was clear. That was one of the reasons why, um, why he and I got along, I think. Um, Wait, would he have made it to the window or was he just not? Uh, he, so no, so he, um, he like stayed by the door. He like held the door shut as the rest of us in the class like made our way across the room and, and jumped out the window. Nice. Yeah, it's an, it was an incredible story. Okay, so, um, was, so, so you, MoveLine, um, you, you have a great co-founder, right? And um, tell me about how you met her and the company that you built and brought to Vegas. And Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah. Um, so when I was in grad school, I got to know a group of angel investors. Um, one of them was a guy that owned an agency in Virginia um, and is now uh, is now on MoveLine's board as one of our investors. Um, so Kelly was working at that agency at the time. Um, I uh, raised some money from him and from some other folks for a different startup that I worked on before this that failed. Um, and uh, we raised about a hundred... The social calendar? Yeah, it was a social calendar. It was could myself and co-founder. It could have been huge, yeah. <laughs> um, but was it? And, um, and we eventually shut that company down. But while I was working on that company, um, I got to know Kelly while she was working at the agency. And uh, Kelly was uh, the product manager on um, a project where a large moving company had hired this agency to build out a platform for itself. Um, so Kelly, um, Kelly was like, you know, working with these moving company salespeople and these, um, these household goods truck drivers and these dispatchers of this moving company and learned a lot about the moving industry. Um, while she was working this agency and um, put together the thesis for like a disruptive consumer product in the moving industry um, and she and I got to know each other during that time and when I was um, starting to shut down my company or kind of decide if I wanted to keep going with it and try and raise more money or go a different direction um, she and I sat down and kind of laid out what this would look like and I shut that down we started moving on a couple months yeah. later and and that was well, yeah, you're, de I mean, you're definitely disrupting the industry. I mean, as far as I can tell, you're one of the most disruptive Vegas tech companies. You guys are doing a great job. It seems like you're always hiring. And in fact, um, if you guys like MoveLine, which I do, <laughs> and you might want to think about working for them, you guys are hiring like crazy, right? Move yeah. And yeah, I think um, I think we've hired like 35 people since we moved here last August. Yeah, that's insane. Um, we've that's got awesome. dozens of openings literally right now. Um, we just got a, a large new office space. Um, that we're going to be moving into in the next week or so here, um, so expanding pretty quickly. Yeah, so um, we're hiring like our entry level um, kind of customer service rep position as a move captain, um, but we're hiring for for marketing and product and design and engineering and um, operations and a bunch of positions across the board. So it's awesome. I'm sure, we get some people. Well, you guys want to do uh, maybe a cheers for for Mr. Fred here? Yeah. <laughs>
hosting the sponsor segment here at Downtown Podcast, Woo! which is really exciting. What's my name? Do you know it? Ah, 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 no, not today. Today my name is Joe Holiday because today is National Joe Day. It's true. It is. And you can celebrate any which way you like. You can celebrate with a cup of Joe. That's what Suze has right there. Or you can celebrate just because your name is Joe. Or you can have Joe in your name. Like Joanna or Joseph or Joey or Jody. It's very exciting. Today is also National Quirky Country Song Music Title Day. It is. You know how those country songs, they got some crazy titles. So I'm going to read a few to you. One of which I made up myself. And you have to guess which one is not the real country music song title. Here we go. Did I shave my legs for this? Yes. No. Do you want the fries? No, I'm going to do them first. But I appreciate your enthusiasm, Dylan. Do you want fries with that? My baby's got Viagra because I'm a lot of woman. I... I ain't never gone to bed with an ugly woman, but I sure woke up with a few. All right, which one of those is not a real country song title? The Viagra one? Damn, you guys are good! That makes me mad that I couldn't have convinced you on that. And why did I choose that title? Because today is National Viagra Day! FDA approved Viagra. I have two pills left, and just to show my graciousness, to show my graciousness, I will give one to someone after the show. If you're interested, just see me. Tomorrow is also National Mom and Pop Business Owners Day. Yeah, and I want to read to you the definition of mom and pop business from Investopedia, which I liked. Mom and pop shops are able to stay competitive by differentiating themselves from their large scale competitors with a unique product, exceptional service, and a personalized feel. And this, I feel, encapsulates this lady over here, who by the way is our sponsor, responsible for your free beer. that you do the amazing facials and the massages, but now you're starting manicures and pedicures. I am. Yes, tell them the genesis. Why is that happening now? That's happening now because for the longest time we've all been hearing our neighborhood here in downtown Las Vegas needs a nail salon. So I figured, why not me? So um, that's it. I have an Indiegogo campaign up right now and there's 29 days left on it. And if you go to fetishspa.com, um, it'll take you to my Indiegogo campaign. Nice, now you do everything. Tell them a little bit about your credentials. Sure, uh, I've been a massage therapist for going on 10 years. I'm an esthetician, which is someone who's trained to take care of your skin, and now a licensed nail technician. That's amazing. Now I've done my research on this. She does everything there, like everything. No other place in downtown Las Vegas focuses on the skin like you do, with the hands and the feet and the nails and the face and the massage and the body, the whole thing. So um, tell them a little bit about how Indiegogo is gonna help. How can we help with the Indiegogo? Sure, um, like the community has been so supportive over the last year that I've been open and um, I'm just, I'm, I'm really looking forward to like spending a lot more time uh, engaging with the community. So I need to purchase some uh, supplies to get the nail thing started and that's basically why I have an Indiegogo campaign right now. You, you don't have far to go. I mean, no. we can, we can, it's, we're, we're going to make this happen. Thanks, Matt. Yes, yeah, I think we're we gonna can. Get there. I think we can. All right. So now you have you have an intimate. This is she has a really intimate, like private space. Talk, tell them it's amazing. Sure. Um, okay. Well, I'm located on the second floor of Emergency Arts. Right it's around the corner. Yeah, right around the corner. So if you haven't been by, please come by and say hi. Um, I'm on the second floor, and I'm in like the tiniest day spa you'll ever see in your whole life. It's about 140 square feet, and anytime I do any service, whether it's just an eyebrow wax or it's a three-hour um, package. The door is always locked. It's my client. It's me. 
there's lighting, there's music, and um, it's just the two of us. It's completely private, so it's a little bit different from what you, you usually expect when you think of like a typical nail salon experience. Yeah, so you go there and you're like escaping. I mean, that's nice, right? Yeah, yes, totally. Yes. Yeah. So, um, April, a couple days away, is National Decorating Month. And on her Indiegogo, she has this video of these crazy nails that she does. It's nail art. It is. It's amazing. Tell them a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so you guys should check out my video because there's a really hilarious part where I'm showing off my Star Trek nail art. I did some pin-up girls. And it's, it didn't make it in the video, but I have it. So you should come by and see it. Like clockwork orange nail art, including like a cod piece. That is so cool. <laughs> And no, no, that's it. Yesterday was the 26th, and it was National Make Up Your Own Holiday Day. And I always kind of, it's true, there is a, that, yes, it is. So I always thought that my show, I'd want to wait for it to sort of have more traction before I made up a new holiday, right? But I'm like, you know what? Because all you have to do is just announce a holiday. Like American Crew might say, hey, it's National Men's Grooming Day. And then it gets out there and it's the holiday. But I wanted to wait, but I'm not waiting anymore. I did research, okay? I always do research, right? There is no National Manicure Day. There's no National Mani Petty Day. There's no National Pedicure Day. I mean, you might not understand, but this is crazy. There's over 4,000 holidays a year, and there's no National Manicure Day. I don't like this. So we, Hollywood TV and Fetish, are creating a holiday. It's National Mani Petty Day. Who likes that day? You like it? on the last day of your Indiegogo, that's gonna be April 25th, and all we gotta start doing to get a holiday living on the internet is creating business, busyness, right? We're gonna tweet about it, Facebook it. How cool is that? The genesis of National Manny Petty Day, Holiday What TV, and Fetish born with us. I love it, I'm excited. Support the Indiegogo. Happy holidays, I'm Joe. Tag.